it's actually very quite rare to find perfect elastic collisions. In fact, if two things come in, actually physically come in contact with each other, they're not perfectly elastic because there is going to be some deformation of the objects. If it, whenever a foot hits a soccer ball, the soccer ball compresses a little bit. That means work is done on the soccer ball and some kinetic energy of the foot, you know, some kinetic energy is lost in that process. But that, that's another side story there. Um, a good example in real life of something that is almost perfectly elastic is uh, pool, playing pool. So cue ball, your eight ball, all of that. So here's a problem. I have a cue ball and I give you the mass going 1.2 meters per second, strikes an eight ball, there's that mass, uh, perfectly elastically head on, the eight ball is stationary in the middle of the pool table. All right, and then I say the cue ball after the collision continues to move forward at 0.25 meters per second. So now it's gonna slow down how fast will the eight ball begin going? So this is a elastic problem, right? M1 VI plus M2 VI equals uh, M1 VF plus M2 VF. Um, sometimes to allow more uh, detailed uh, sub guys, you know, sub letters, instead of using VI uh, or VF, they'll use U. Um, physics books will use U for VI and V for final velocity, VF, and that'll allow them to put U sub 1, right, to indicate that initial velocity goes with 1 instead of having to put, like, VI and then, like, a little 1 underneath that. that that's just kind of craziness. Um, so sometimes U and, and, and V there. So let's substitute in our numbers and go ahead and solve this problem through. So I've got my cue ball here, right? going 1.2 meters per second, and the eight ball is stationary, so I'm calling the eight ball mass two or object two. On the final side, the cue ball continues to move forward at 0.25 meters per second. So notice the signs with this. Everything is going from what I'm calling forward positive, right? The, the cue ball continues to move the same direction. So I called the direction it was initially, initially going positive. So if it continues to go that direction, it, it, it's positive there. And I'm expecting my final velocity for my eight ball to come out positive. This would also be a good time to point out how I knew this was a elastic collision, besides the fact that it actually says perfectly elastic in there. Um, the two objects uh, start out separated and then they bounce off of each other separated. It says nothing about the two objects sticking together or combining or catching or anything along those lines. So it must be a elastic collision. All right, so now it's just algebra. Let me go ahead and solve that through. All right, and with significant figures, I come out with a final velocity of 1.1 meters per second. Now, momentum problems can always, like any other physics problem, can always spin into other problems to where we're actually solving for what's happening, happening physically instead of just trying to narrow everything down to this one specific type of physics problem instead trying to solve for real life. So like in pool, for example, uh, it's not just about having two balls collide. The entire purpose is trying to get the ball that you're trying to hit with the cue ball to go into the pocket. So here we're trying to get the eight ball to, to go into the pocket. Let's, let's hope that this is the last one if you're playing eight ball. Um, so the pool, uh, a pool ball that's going too fast, aka greater than 1.1 meters per second, um, will actually hit the pocket and bounce out. So if you hit it too hard, it's not going to fall in. It's going to bounce out. Um, and one going too slow, right, friction, the rolling coefficient of friction, friction will actually slow it down and won't even make it. All right, so we need to make sure whenever we strike our cue ball and it collides with the eight ball, and the eight ball now has velocity, we don't want the eight ball to be going too fast, which means we didn't want to hit our cue ball too fast. So my question here is, with what we know about the final velocity of our eight ball, coefficient of friction, and the distance away from the pocket, will the eight ball actually go in the pocket? Now, we're already at 1.1 meters per second, so we know that it's not going to bounce out. And so really the question is, is it going to slow down too much, or is it going to, uh, is it, is it going to make it all the way there? Now, there are multiple ways to try to solve this problem. You can use kinematics. You can also use work energy theorem. Um, so either way you want, uh, is just fine whether you want to use Newton's second law uh, and kinematics or work energy theorem. I'm going to use work energy theorem because it gives me more of a, a plug chug uh, style problem here. Initially, the cube or the eight ball has all kinetic energy. That's what it has, all kinetic energy in the very beginning. And we're going to convert all of that kinetic energy into two places. First, some of that kinetic energy is going to be done by 
uh, is going to be stolen by friction, work done by friction. And I'm hoping not all of it goes into friction. I still want some to have some kinetic energy, right? I still want to have some kinetic energy left over. In other words, I want the ball to still be going whenever it hits the pocket here. So I have now one half m v initial squared equals work done by friction breaks down into uh, your force, right? Force of friction times displacement delta x plus the final kinetic energy, one-half mv final squared, and mv final, uh, final velocity, v final is, is, is my end goal here. So I put up a quick free body diagram because I don't know what the force of friction is, so I'm gonna need, I know I'm gonna need to go to Newton's second law for that, and let's work the next line down. One-half mass of the eight ball, I know. Initial velocity, I know, because that was the answer. Um, and the last problem, the final velocity, the last problem, right, becomes the initial velocity in this one. Force of friction breaks down into mu times normal force, right, so mu times normal force, delta x, plus one-half mass of the eight ball, I know, final velocity of that eight ball right before it hits the pocket. That's what I'm looking for. I know my delta x, it's 1.3, and so I know mu, 0.07, I just don't know normal force. We come over to Newton's second law on the y-axis. I'm not going to set that up for you because you're so used to it. Since there's nothing else pulling it up or down, it's not on a ramp. Normal force is equal to the force of gravity, which is mg. So let me pull up another slide to finish this out. So I end up with 1 half mvi squared mu, and I need to remember change fn, right, which is the same as fg, no acceleration in the y-axis. Force of gravity is mg, so that, that's what normal force is changing into, mass times gravity. Delta x plus 1 half mass of the 8 ball, final velocity squared. Okay, now I have everything down. I know the mass, I know the initial velocity, 1.1 from the previous problem, right? The, the final became the initial. I know the coefficient of friction, mass, 9.81. The distance that uh, the ball is traveling, that friction gets to steal energy over. Uh, the mass of the cue ball, again, allows me to solve for the final velocity. Now, I'm actually going to solve this problem in, in good physics terms, leaving everything as variables till the very end. And that, that's really the best way to do it. Sometimes, for understanding's sake, it might be easier to get numbers in sooner. But if you can leave it in variable form all the way to the end, try to do that. All right, so I subtracted my mu mg delta x to the other side, multiplied both sides by 2 to get rid of the 1 half, and I'm actually going to, in the next step, distribute my 2 here uh, to, to, make, to make life a little bit easier, not having to have the, uh, the parentheses. Divide by m, take the square root. And you'll notice here, since m is in every term, the m actually cancels out. And once I substitute in all my numbers, I come out with a final velocity of 1.0 meters per second. So my initial velocity was 1.1, happened to be the same as uh, the maximum speed before it starts to bounce out. But uh, that was from the final velocity in the last problem. Coefficient of friction was given 0.07, 9.81, delta x, the distance it had to travel, that friction got to steal energy over 1.3 meters. Substitute in, I get one meter per second is my final velocity, so the ball is going to end up going in the pocket just fine. Um, if this actually came out to be a negative number, that would mean it was negative inside here, so you would have gotten imaginary in your, in your calculator, imaginary number. That would have meant that friction stole all the energy, and if, if somehow or another magically the ball was able to keep going, we'd end up with a negative final velocity or an imaginary answer. So it, then it wouldn't have worked. It obviously would have acquired a lot lower VI because the rolling friction, coefficient of rolling friction, is so low.